Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a Max Effort Bench Press Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. Be greatly appreciated. All right, pressing strength is coming back up. My plan is working well. Uh, this first decently heavy single was heavier than my close grip last week, which was 315. This was a training max. This is 322 with the Buffalo Bar adds about a half inch of range of motion with the grip I'm using. Makes it a hair harder, but I'm not weak out of the bottom, so it doesn't actually affect me. If anything, I might be borderline stronger with this bar because it's fatter. For some reason, I stack my wrist better the thicker the bar is. Like when I've done an axle bar before, I wasn't any weaker than a normal bar. A lot of people are. All right, that was a little grindy, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. 332. All right, let's talk a little bit about this idea everyone always brings up. Sorry, on this first set of close grips, I had the J-hooks still set to where they were for that bar. I had to bring them up on the next sets. All right, everyone uses all this nonsense of, oh, you've got to get used to the heavier weight. Guys, I haven't touched anything over about 305 in months while I've been healing. Okay, you saw me do 315 one time, and it was easy. I need to handle heavier weights. Can I do 332 today? Close grip. What'd you guys see me do on the deadlift last year? I went to that charity event. Did anyone see me touch anything, even from pins or anything else, pull anything heavier than 570? No. I came in and yanked 585 like a warm up and then pulled 625. That charity event. Now, granted, my deadlifts regressed a little bit. We're bringing it back up. Well, how did I do that? Because I got stronger. I built the strength to be able to do it. Okay. I've been hammering my weak points, been working on the speed work. Okay. Went back to close grip. Realistically speaking, I'm going to be back at a 350 bench within a matter of weeks. I got almost four months to worlds. Got all this dialed in. And what's the name of the game here? We're doing back work, by the way. Close gripping here. I'm doing, doing that McDonald bar on speed bench day. What are we doing? Building delts, building triceps, building upper back. And I'm close gripping. Now, all this is done with a pause. This is working chest. That heavy single works chest, right? Built, it actually hit my upper threshold fibers first. Then we come in and do this rep work, all paused, driving off the chest explosively, right? Everything explosive. Pause in the last rep. Some of these I'm pausing them a couple seconds, two, three seconds, driving it up. Now I need to get this five by 10 up and we'll progressively overload it or we'll change bars. All right, we'll change bars to avoid overuse. But I'm hammering delts and triceps and I'm pushing the accessory work hard. I am building the muscles, which you'll see later through here. All right, I realize on these inverted rows because of setup time and I'm trying to get through these workouts quicker, it's a lot of volume. Much as I love the chest supported rows, so I'm in a house, I need to get a bench. I need to get a bench for that. I may need to get one of those just so I can do seal rows. But in the meantime, so I'm doing the pull-ups and I, I'm doing pull-ups off camera too. So it's like this morning, I didn't want to record it, but I did my pull-ups. All right, I'm getting pull-ups in. My lats are getting tons of work. I can get away with all this axle bar stuff. Do you know why it matters? My grip strength affects my deadlift lockouts a lot. I was doing tons and tons and tons of axle bar work when I walked in and started pulling over 600 again. And that first 615 I pulled a couple years ago was clean and I held the lockout and I talked for a minute holding it. All right, my grip matters. I think a lot of this axle bar work, all the back work, and then hammering those reverse hypers the way I am, that's how we get the deadlift back to where I want it. And I think that'll fix some of my weak points on my squat too. Leg power is there. But, yeah, this is just pump. Yeah, I know these are sets of 15. 
and I know my pull-ups are like sets of 10. But again, thick, 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 build that upper back. Besides, we're getting heavy deadlifts and stuff in. It's getting hit with heavier tension too. I need to get that upper back thick. Pump work, and then think about the grip training involved. And I may do these all four workouts for just a bit. Let's see if we can get that grip built. Because my grip is holding strong on these. It's not really been a problem until the last set here. I didn't have to regrip. Then I regripped, I think, on this last set. It got a little tough. All right. Work that grip. It's not truly limiting me on these, and I'm getting a hell of a back pump. My lats, rear delts, and everything getting hit real hard on those. And then as far as the rest of the upper back, all this shoulder work hits it. Okay, we're getting a lot of volume. I went up on these five pounds again. I need to keep bringing these up. I know they're not the strictest form, but it doesn't matter. Because it's not super heavy. I feel my entire shoulder girdle. Now, of course, after rowing first and doing that axle bar stuff, I definitely feel my forearms and biceps and everything. Definitely feel all that. Notice that's all getting thicker. We're getting a lot thicker there which you guys will see near the end, I threw some hammer curls in. I'm throw, taking out supine grip work. You know what, I don't think for strength athletes we need to do it, it's not worth the, the tendon stuff. Um, I, I just don't care about it. And you know what, all this pronated grip builds forearms, brachialis, radial brachialis, it builds more arm thickness. Probably better for my benching Hammer curls build grip too. And we gotta get that grip super strong. That's what's gonna help my deadlift and it's gonna help my bench because any arm thickness and strength carries over to bench, especially now that I'm close gripping again. But yeah, we gotta blow up the delts. And we're doing so much pulling and then even this thrown in, my rear delts are getting tons of work. I'm not even doing band work anymore, why? Uh, I'm doing pull-ups, at least five good sets of pull-ups every week. <laughs> like 20 sets of rows. And then this stuff, this hits the rear delts also. Hits all three heads in the traps. We're good. And we're progressing on it. Plate raises, we're progressing. I realized on these, even with this, now that I'm at five sets as a last workout, I can do more than 10 reps. I lost count. Some of them, these were 10, 11, 12. And then I went to the last set, and I'm like, let me see if I can get more. I got 15. So... What we need to do next time on these is come in and see if I can get 15 reps on all five sets. Then I want to work that up, right? What's a good long-term goal here? Five sets of 20 with the 45 pound plate, all right? Again, build the delts. A lot of people are like, why was a lot of this rep work, all this pump work, is it gonna give you exactly what you want? Yes, because I'm doing the max work still. I am fatiguing the highest upper threshold fibers first. We're doing the, the ME work. It's different than doing this stuff by itself. Yes, it's all body, what people would think of as bodybuilding style training, all hypertrophy pump work. But we're either doing really heavy work first, and on lower days it's two lifts, or we're doing speed work for explosiveness against bands and chains, compensatory acceleration. All right, we're still getting what we want to bias it back a little towards myofibular growth, if that indeed can be biased. It's a point of contention in the research. The best researchers in the world argue this point. They don't know. Best experts. But either way, I would be rebiasing it if there is potential for it. But here's what we do know. Hypertrophy always raises your strength ceiling. Okay. And again, I'm not worried about gaining extra glycogen body weight. Why? Because I can drop all that for weight cuts. In fact, it makes it easier. The more lean tissue we have relative to fat tissue, the easier water cuts go. All right. So, first five sets, I supersetted these with hammer curls. I got 20 reps. Now, some of these I had to rest a second to get there, but I've not been doing 20s with this band. I got 12s last time, around 12, 12 plus. You were getting over 20 with the next lightest band down, but this is a significantly heavier, heavier band. We're up to 20s now. Again, building the triceps. And these, I don't care. People can say, oh, you're swinging a little. I don't care. I feel a hell of a pump in my biceps and my forearms. 
and uh, I'm getting thicker there. But yeah, I used 52 pound dumbbells, did five sets of 10 and supersetted it with the first five sets of these. So hammer curls, builds more of the arm than just the bicep. And I've never seen meaningful data that proves we need supine work to even maximize bicep development. That these grips put a deeper stretch on the bicep. Stretch position is where we have the most potential for hypertrophy. Right. But it builds forearms, it builds grip, it builds brachialis with it. Look at my forearms getting bigger. I need them bigger. All right. Another reason we're doing all the axle bar work. We're doing tons of other pulling. Of course, I'm doing pull-ups all the time. All right, build the arms. Build the whole arm. Not just the bicep. So in this case, it's going, okay, how can I get more out of a curl? And it's easier on the tendons anyways. Easier on the tendons. So we're giving ourselves more cushion and support out of the bottom of the bench building more grip strength, potentially for the bench, definitely for the deadlift. Okay. Building elbow health by using all these band press downs builds elbow tendons, but I'm getting a hell of a tricep pump. People can argue all they want, this doesn't build triceps, but my close grip strength is climbing again. Outside of my close grip work and speed work, it's my only tricep work, but I'm doing 10 sets twice a week and we're pushing progressive overload with a lot of volume. My elbows feel good. So again, we're building elbow health. We've got to have elbow health. Another reason I think I need to not do supine stuff, I noticed a little bit from the supine, a little bit of minor inflammation. We can't have that. We can't have that if we're deadlifting heavy. So let's work on tendon health. Let's work on elbow health. It's like I'm working on low back health again by hammering the reverse hypers the same way I'm doing these. All right, keep leveling up. That bench is going to climb. People say, well, you're not going to get to 405, really? I hit sub 300 my last two meets, rehabbing, rebuilding. You guys watched me just close grip 332. After only doing 315 last week, first time I've hit 315 in a while. Like that's a lot of bench increase in a short time. I'm not going to hit 405 at Worlds. I'm not going to try to do it next year. I think it's unreasonable. If I keep building these muscles, all the bench muscles, which we're doing right now. Anyone want to argue I'm not getting bigger? You just saw those side views up close. You can argue it all you want. It's working. And we're doing it in a way that's going to keep everything healthy, keep us with a lower injury risk, lower inflammation. All right, paying real, a lot of attention to tendons. Yeah, we're going to get thicker, we're going to get leaner. You guys saw once I drop water how lean I look at this point in the water cut. I had abs, full six pack, shredded quads, hamstring separation. We'll get leaner, get bigger, win. Just win. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.